some of you may have heard this story, and uh, although I, I've been working on a new one, and I, I, soon I'll, I'll have something fresh for you, Sharon has asked me to reprise this uh, encore thing, you know, like they do in Prairie Home Companion, a, an encore performance, not really bothering to call it a rerun. Um, <laughs> and, I, and I feel really good about it because Doug was just telling me that, yeah, I've heard it once on the radio, and yeah, I heard you do that one about Christmas. Like, oh, great. Okay. So that's, that's it. That's all I got. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and do it anyway. Um, when you grow up as a kid believing in Santa Claus, which I did, and you're Jewish, it's problematic. Because you've got to figure that, you know, Santa Claus is anti-Semitic. I mean, I mean, how else can you possibly justify an entire race of people getting on the naughty list? I mean, how does that happen? You know, Glenn Blackman next door, Santa stops there every year. Our place, no tracks in the snow, <laughs> no reindeers on the roof. What is going on here? And, you know, I have friends who like, well, you have Hanukkah. You have the magical festival of lights. Eight days of presents. Yeah. We got any Jews out there? Yeah. yeah. What did you get on Hanukkah when you were a kid? Yeah. I had to split my gifts to two other people. And, and what kind of gifts were they? Well, they were game, board games. Little board games that you have to share with you. But that, that was pretty good. You were lucky. What else? What else out there? Socks. Socks. You know, and, and gelt. That was the big thing, which is, a, you know, chocolate coins. Uh, my grandfather would give me pennies that I was, and my mom would elbow me, be grateful. It's, it's pennies. And meanwhile, next door, Glenn Blackman is pulling down train sets and rock 'em, sock 'em robots. And hey, Warren, Santa came. You want to see what he. Again. Okay. So finally, I, I, I corner my mom about it and I said, what, Mom, what's the deal? How come Santa comes to Blackman's house and, and doesn't come to our house? And she said, well, that's because they're Christian and we're not, we're Jewish. I said, what, what does that mean, that they're Christian? Well, Christians, they, they, will, they wear kind of like powder blue leisure suits a lot. <laughs> and they, they, they go on TV and they beg for money and, and they believe in Jesus and we don't. And I said, why don't we believe in Jesus? She goes, oh, Larry, could you believe this? He wants to know why we don't believe in Jesus. <laughs> Okay, look, Jesus was a nice Jewish boy who told everybody to love each other, which is nice. But then they make this big Megillah out of it, and next thing you know, you got the Crusades and the Inquisitions and the killings. And I said, wait, wait a minute. So Jesus was Jewish? And she said, yeah. So did Santa come to Jesus' house? <laughs> no, Santa wasn't even born yet. So I, I'm very, very confused at this point, understandably. So I, I, I go to the closest thing I have as a spiritual advisor, Yussel, my Hebrew school teacher, and I ask him about this. Warren, you want to know why Santa doesn't come to you. Juan, do you know what it means to be Jewish, what it really means? I said, yes, we say prayers in Hebrew. We have an inexplicable love for Chinese food and, <laughs> um, and, uh, and we don't eat bacon. <laughs> and he says, no, what it, what it really means to be Jewish. You mean, <laughs> no, no, not down there, no, <laughs> well, maybe a little, but <laughs> Warren, what it really means to be Jewish is that we believe that everything we do, every moment in life is sacred. 
Everything is a blessing from God, this life that we have. You want to talk about presence? The greatest present are these moments where we remember that. Here, pray with me. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu, Melech. Great. Blessings from God. Terrific. But would it kill him to throw in a Hot Wheels set once in a while? <laughs> Something. You know, I was ready to give up on the whole Christmas thing, and then I got the news. Santa was coming to town. Our town, Monticello, New York, he was coming on Tuesday. <laughs> and I was at that age where, you know, I wasn't sure if this was a real deal, but he came by helicopter. I mean, they're not going to stuff some guy in a Santa suit just to fool a bunch of kids. I mean, that's conspiracy talk, right? <laughs> so I get out there, and they've cleared this parking lot behind the courtroom, uh, the courthouse. And there's this whoosh as he comes in. And the hats are blowing everywhere and scarves everywhere. And they're setting up this chair for him, which was like a, a brown lazy boy, which seemed <laughs> wrong on some level. And, and he gets out, and, and, and I see that it's, that it's really Santa. I mean, he's, it's not like a fake beard or, you know, he's not some mall ho-ho-ho Santa. And this guy, we gets out of this, this helicopter, he's laughing and it's this deep laugh that starts deep in his belly and it just takes over his whole body and I just, I can't wait to see him. And, and so the kids are lining up and I'm about 15 kids deep and I'm getting more and more nervous as I get closer and closer to him. I mean, this is the guy, this is Santa. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking up to him, but I'm also, I, I'm, I'm kind of pissed too. You know, he's been giving all these gifts to everybody else all the time and he hasn't come to me and, and I don't know what to say. I don't know what I'm gonna ask for, but I finally, when I get up there, I look up, he was way up there, and I just said, Santa, I'm a Christian. <laughs> And, and he gave me this look, this kind of confused. It, it, it was clear he didn't know what to do with this information. Uh, and, and as I'm looking at him, I don't, I don't know how I know this, but I know that he's not the real Santa. And I have just betrayed my whole family. And Yassel, I <laughs> say. So I go home crying and I think I, I'm done with this whole Christmas business until years later, I, I marry this nice Catholic girl and it all starts over again. <laughs> and, and I'll never forget uh, one of the first Christmases of our oldest son, Eli. He, he was probably three, just about old enough to sort of get an idea and understand what was going on. And I remember he woke us at dawn I mean, it was just barely light on the horizon, and he's dragging us out of bed. Mom, Dad, he came, he came, he came, Santa came, he came. And he's showing us the footprints of uh, ashes ac across the carpet and the crumbs that he left in the cookies that we left out the night before. And he starts tearing into his presence with this sense of joy and wonder. And, and I'm looking at him, and I thought, a yussel. <laughs> I thought, Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Thank you. It was a hot, sticky Wednesday night. Hollywood, California, 1974. Where were you in 1974? Well, I was a young 24-year-old actor in Hollywood trying to find my way to become a movie star. And I had found my way into this avant-garde theater company, something that I had never done before. Now, this was only the third day we'd been together. There was about 40 of us that were in this little acting troupe in this avant-garde theater company. But the thing about this was different. Every night that you'd come to the theater, it was always different. It was always a surprise. 
So this one night, we're standing around, and you don't really know the other people yet. We're just getting to know each other. And all of a sudden, it's time for the director to come out and tell us what is our exercise this night. Let me describe this guy to you. His, his name was Ron, and he was this big guy. He was kind of a, a combo of uh, Santa Claus and Jabba the Hutt. <laughs> so he makes his entrance. All right, everybody, listen up. Come on, gather around. Yo, everybody, come on, come on, come on. Go, 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 go. Let's go. Here we go. You ready? You ready? Tonight's exercise is called Outer Theater. I'll tell you what that means. And then right now, just find a partner. Everybody buddy up. So we're all looking around and, uh, yeah, hi. No, I don't, no, sure, hi, I'm Doug. George, nice to meet you. Let me tell you about George. George was about a six, actually, he was about four or five, he was about, okay, he was about five foot tall. About 185 pounds, balding. That's right, George was short. Now the reason I tell you about George is way back then. Before I pumped iron and bulked up. I used to be thin. 20 pounds thinner than I am today. You got the picture? Laurel and Hardy. Or for some of you who aren't quite so old, Belushi and Aykroyd. <laughs> so now I got my partner. The director comes back out. All right, everybody, here we go. Outer theater. You got your partners? You got your buddies? Yes, you got a partner? Yes? Uh huh. You got one? Okay, here we go. Outer theater. You are going to love this. Tonight you are leaving the building. Tonight you are leaving the building, and you and your partner are going to go out there into the world, and you're going to do something you would never, ever do. Something that scares the hell out of you. Something that is a complete and total risk outside of your comfort zone. I want you to go out there. I'm going to give you an hour. So do something. Come back here in an hour and we'll talk about it, okay? Are you ready? On your mark, get set, go! <laughs> what? I'm trying to be a serious actor. Dustin Hoffman, Shakespeare. Ah, George, you have any ideas? You have any ideas, man? <laughs> I do. I have an idea. Um, <laughs> what if, uh, what if you and I go to a 7-Eleven and we steal some candy bars? <laughs> uh, okay, yes, that would be a risk for me. But uh, George, let's try and come up with something where neither one of us gets arrested, okay? All right, well, what have you got? Valid point, valid question. What have I got, what have I got? What would I do? Something that I would never do, something that is a risk. To... Hey, George, I got an idea. Okay, what if you and I were to go streaking? Would that be a risk for you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that was it. We decided we were going to go streaking. Oh, this was so cool. So we left the building. We went outside. We got into my 1962 Volkswagen bus. Okay, here we go. All right. Here we go, George. Come on, this is gonna be so cool. Where are we gonna go? We gotta find a place where there's people. Westwood. <laughs> For those of you who don't know LA, Westwood is right outside of UCLA. It is very she-she, upscale, like the Boulder Mall shopping area. Lots of shops, restaurants, clothing stores, record stores, little coffee shops with little tables out on the street, you know, and five movie theaters. I had gone to the movies there and sometimes you have to stand in line. So I'm thinking, George, what if there's a line? If we could time the, oh man, this is gonna be so cool. So we drive to Westwood. We pull into a parking place right at the end of an alley, right next to the street, rectangular block, alley down the middle. We pull in, all right, oh yes. Yes. 
Oh, no. George, did you notice any 7-Elevens? <laughs> okay, okay, fine. I know it was my, I know, okay, fine, after you. Thank you. Okay, so now we're in the back of my Volkswagen bus. This guy, George, and I, that I have just met. We are dancing cheek to cheek, so to speak, in the back of my mind. Did I mention this bus had windows all the way around? <laughs> We're back and down. We are taking off our clothes. And now, it is the moment of truth. We are 100% completely fuck naked! Except for our shoes. <laughs> Luckily for me, I, I was wearing gym shoes that night. George was wearing Penny loafers? <laughs> Good luck, George. Good luck. Okay. Okay. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. All right, George. George, on, the, on my count of three. On my count of three, we're going to do this. Okay, one. Oh, my God, I can't do this. I can't do this. Two. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. What? What? Get out of the bus, okay, George? I'll get out of the bus. Okay, three. For some reason, I jumped out, hit the street, and started running and screaming at the top of my lungs. Here I come! Oh my gosh, it's warm. I can feel the wind beneath my wings. Here I come! I get up to the corner, I turn the corner. Oh! A whole bunch of people on a movie theater line. Come on, George, here I come! People on a line are watching us go by. All right, that is cute. You go, man, hey! Whoa, jeez. Wow, okay, big boy. Go, you go, you go! And I'm running down the street. And all of a sudden, I start to have an asthma. <laughs> I get up to the corner. I turn the corner. I can see the alley up ahead. The end is in sight. Little did I know. But as we got out of the van and started running this way, a policeman and a cop car saw us and started going this way. And it was his plan to head me off at the pass. So as I come running up to the alley, all of a sudden, there's sirens blaring, lights flashing, brakes screeching, and over the loudspeaker for all the world to hear, he yells, freeze! <laughs> Put your hands up! All the way up. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> the other way. <laughs> Turn around and face the police car. About this time, George arrives, wearing one penny loafer, <laughs> and then something traumatic started to happen. People started to gather around at the end of the alley. Fifty people, a hundred people. I got my first standing ovation. <laughs> <laughs> and 
And then finally, after what seemed like a decade, a cop got out of his car and started walking towards us, slapping his nightstick on his palm as he approached. Slap, <laughs> slap, <laughs> slap. He gets right up in my face and says, turn around. Thinking, what is he looking for? <laughs> Concealed weapons? <laughs> With that, he handcuffs us naked, holds up the police car, and says, Get in the back. Huh? No, officer. Yes, sir. Uh. <sighs> ah! Whoa, the seats are vinyl. <laughs> Whoa. So finally, he drives us to the West Los Angeles police station, takes us out after allowing us to put on our underpants, walks us into the station, handcuffed in our underwear, and starts parading us around in the lobby in front of criminals and murderers. <laughs> and the receptionist hides. <laughs> he saw a bench in the lobby and says, go sit down on that bench. We sit down on the bench. He handcuffs us to the bench. Well, he disappears to go check our records to see if we're perverts. I kept telling him, officer, we're actors. <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> so finally, after a half hour, he comes back, releases the handcuffs, hands us our clothes and says, we checked your records. You're not perverts. You're free to go. Thank you, I guess. So we put on our clothes and we took a taxi back to Westwood and we got the van and we went back to the theater where we were the hit of the evening. <laughs> <laughs> but the next morning, I gotta tell you, I woke up the next morning and I felt incredible. <laughs> I just felt so free. And I just felt like, come on, what do you got? I mean, that happened, and that was my greatest fear of all time that the world would see. And I got a standing ovation. <laughs> I mean, what else do you got, Hollywood? I mean, come on. And from that moment on, for days, I just felt so confident. And for we we weeks, we a month, years. For years, I just felt this fe feeling of, of power and, and freedom. And I had to go back and ask myself, why? Why, what was that? And over the years, I've traced it back to the back of the bus. When I was inside that bus, even though I was naked, I could have just chosen to stay in that bus and to stay in that little space that was safe. But when George said, come on, get out of the bus, the minute I got out of the bus, it happened. And what I learned from that experience is time after time, I keep finding myself, finding my way back inside the back of the bus where it's safe. And I have to continually push myself out to get out of the bus. How about you? Do you ever get stuck in that comfort zone and you're afraid to do something? Because you think, oh my gosh, if I do that, that I'm just going to... You're going to get arrested naked? <laughs> well, then my challenge for you is get out of the bus. Thank you. <laughs>